hello my dear students so this is the third part of our section coming to the first question of our third session what causes the twinkling of stars atmospheric refraction of starlight dispersion of starlight scattering of starlight none of the above so students uh, what is the answer what causes the twinkling of stars it is atmospheric refraction of starlight the twinkling of a star is due to atmospheric refraction of starlight the starlight on entering the earth's atmosphere undergoes refraction continuously before it reaches the earth so it is definitely refraction of starlight so that's all about it coming to the next question what is the phenomenon of bouncing back of light in the same medium on striking the surface of any object is known refraction absorption reflection diffusion very easy question anyone can say who have passed a sixth standard answer is reflection it is the phenomenon of bouncing back of light in the same medium on striking the surface of any object so hope you know all that questions basics coming to the next one ripening of fruits is because of which among the following plant hormones students this is one of the most important question kindly note it you can see this question repeatedly asked in various examinations so what is the answer answer is ethylene option b is the answer so there is chemical formula and all for that if you want to study deep you can go to that also so ripening is a process in fruits that causes them to become more palatable most fruits produce a gaseous compound called ethylene that starts the ripening process ethylene gas can be used to regulate fruit ripening coming to the next question in which parts of the body glycogen is stored mainly students again a most important question from the biology portion please don't miss it, miss these points if you have studied zoology in your 12th 11th standard ncert textbook clearly defines all this that's why from the beginning itself i am saying you must refer to ncert textbook and says option b at liver and muscles glycogen is mainly stored in our human body and additional points is here you can read it and uh, it's better to note down students that will be better coming to the next one which among the following diseases is caused by deficiency of nicotinic acid students again a very important and repeated question kindly note that first option is anemia second is pellagra dermatitis goiter answer is option b pellagra is caused by deficiency of nicotinic acid Niacin which is also known as nicotinic acid is an organic compound it is a form of vitamin B3 students that point is very important and essential human nutrient so points related with vitamin B vitamin B1 B2 B3 etc uh, we have already explained that in our first video kindly go through it so you will get a clear idea question number 56 the chlorophyll cells within the plant leaves are perfectly optimized to absorb which of the following waves of the sunlight again a very important question you could even see this question in the upsc prelims examination so students uh, please give a special eye on it it's actually red and blue so much of students uh, write it as red blue and green students that is completely wrong only red and blue so hope you are looking for the important points chlorophyll is concentrated in organisms in structures called chloroplast that is one of the most important point coming to the next question which among the following is wood cellulose dryad bellata cork none of the above answer is option a rayan so students rayan is wood cellulose it is made from natural sources such as wood and agricultural products that are regenerated as cellulose fiber hope you are getting all this important points coming to the next one which among the following are the building blocks of human body muscles cells neurons proteins so students building blocks means the basic that is what you have to look into the basics of this human body is cells so cells are the building blocks of human body it's in your 8th standard ncert textbook students if you study the ncert textbook you will definitely get 100 marks in all this session from standard 6 to 12 please go through it so that's what regarding it coming to the next question cobalt is a component of which of the following vitamins vitamin a vitamin d vitamin e vitamin b12 cobalt is a component of which of the following vitamins 
Answer is option D, vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is also known as cobalamin. It's an important water-soluble vitamin which is used in the production of RBCs and DNA. That point is very important. Vitamin B12. For this, we have explained. Coming to the next one. What do we call an undropped semiconductor? Very important portion from the semiconductor region of your 12 standard NCRT textbook. So what do you call an undropped semiconductor? Dropping is the adding of addition of impurities. So an undropped semiconductor is an intrinsic semiconductor. It's, a, it's given the important point. This means that holes in the valence bond or vacancies created by electrons that have been thermally excited to the conduction band. So that's regarding your 12th standard NCRT physics section. Okay. Coming to the next question. So students, uh, kindly note the important points. Just don't read it because you will forget it after some days. Which of the following is emitted in alpha decay? Very important portion. Important question. So kindly note this. Which of the following is emitted in alpha decay? What is the answer? Answer is option A. Helium nucleus. In alpha decay, helium nucleus is emitted. Alpha decay or alpha decay is a type of radioactive decay in which an atomic nucleus transforms or decays into a different atomic nucleus with a mass number that is reduced by 4 and an atomic number that is reduced by 2. So that is one of the important questions regarding this section. So students, uh, kindly watch the first video, first two videos. This is the third video. I have given the link on the i button. You can check it and uh, please refer to that video. What do we call the reactions in which heat is generated? We have explained this in our video number 2 already with an example. So heat is generated means exothermic and absorbed means it is an endothermic reaction. So that's the main point you have to note down. Hope for this uh, you are concentrating on this video. Okay, please don't skip this video students. Try to hear what I'm saying and give some additional knowledge to your point. Okay. So that's what regarding it coming to the next question. Question number 63. Which of the following is a part of Chalcogen group of the modern periodic table? Option A boron, option B tin, option C lead, option D oxygen. Answer is option D oxygen. Oxygen uh, these uh, groups are the chalcogens are the group of 16th elements of the periodic table. This group is also known as the oxygen family. It consists of elements oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium and the radioactive ele element polonium. Very important point, radioactive element is polonium. So you will be may get the questions related to Bayer's, Bayer's process is very important. It's related to which of the following. Bayer's process, production of copper oxide, production of alumina, production of zinc oxide, production of silicon dioxide. Students, the answer is option B, production of alumina. The Bayer process is the industrial process of refining bauxite to produce alumina, which is a very important point. Refining of bauxite to produce alumina, aluminum oxide. In this process, alumina is separated from the bauxite ore by using a hot solution of caustic soda, that is sodium hydroxide and lime, calcium oxide. So, hope you are noting down all these important points, students, because these are very important. Coming to the next one, which of the following alpha emitter is commonly used in smoke detectors? Which of the following alpha emitter is commonly used in smoke detectors? So, students, what's the answer? Bismuth 209, Amersium 231, Uranium 238, Protoactinium 231. Answer is option B, Amersium 231. Amersium 241 is an isotope of Amersium. It is the most common isotope of Amersium having a half-life of 432.2 years. It is radioactive and is commonly used in ionization type smog detectors. So students, I hope you are noting all these important points. If you have any doubt, you can definitely comment it on the comment section. Either people who see that will give you a reply or I will reply to you if I am seeing it. Okay. Coming to question number 66. What do we call the covalent bond where the electrons of the shared pair are contributed by only one species. Polar covalent bonds, coordination covalent bonds, unilateral covalent bonds, none of the above. Answer is option B, coordination covalent bonds. So students, I hope you know all these basic things. Uh, the covalent bond, where the electrons of the shared pair are contributed by 
only one species are called as coordination covalent bonds or dative bonds. The common example is the formation of a bond between boron trifluoride and ammonia, BF3 and NH3. Students either take the screenshot or better to write it. I will say it is better to write these points because writing something is equivalent to reading something 10 times. So I believe in that. What do we call the covalent bond where the electrons of the shared pair are contributed by only one species? Polar covalent bonds, coordination covalent bonds, unilateral covalent bonds, none of the above. Answer is option B, coordination covalent bonds. So students, I think we have explained that in the previous section that is again. Which of the following represents vinegar? 20% solution of acetic acid in ethanol, 20% solution of acetic acid in water, 5 to 8% solution of acetic acid in water, 40 to 50% solution of acetic acid in water. It's very clear. It is 5 to 8% solution of acetic acid in a water. So, which is the, uh, which that represents the vinegar. So, hope you will remember this percentage, it is very important. While used as preservative in pickles, you all know that acetic acid is the common name of ethanoic acid, CH3COOH, that is the chemical formula. Coming to the next one, what is the product? When methane reacts with steam in the presence of nickel catalysts. So, this reaction you have already studied and this is a very important reaction. The options given here are carbon dioxide and ethane, ethene, carbon monoxide and dihydrogen, carbon monoxide and water vapor. Students, the answer is option C, carbon monoxide and dihydrogen. Methane reacts with steam at the temperature of 273 Kelvin in the presence of nickel. So, you have seen that, which is the first member of alkane series. Methane, acetylene, propane, ethene. Answer is option B, acetylene. The first stable member of alkane series is ethane, which is popularly known as acetylene. Acetylene is used for arc welding purposes in the form of oxyacetylene flame obtained by mixing acetylene with oxygen gas. So students, hope you all are doing it well. So next question, which of these elements is added to natural number in the process of vulcanization? A very basic but important question from the polymer chemistry topic. Carbon, sulfur, potassium, manganese. It is very clear that the answer is option B, sulfur. Sulfur is added in the vulcanization reaction and the process. So the process is called as the vulcanization. Please uh, write this important point, students. These all are very what, uh, repeatedly asked uh, questions in various examinations. So this will definitely help you. Which of these polymers are used to produce? Butyl rubber, butadiene and neoprene, butadiene and sterine, butadiene and acrylonitrile, butadiene and isobutylene. Answer is option D students, butadiene and isobutylene. So you can see that some of the most questions from the topic are polymer chemistry related with the polymer chemistry. So it's a very simple chapter. Please go through all the basics regarding it. So you can score full marks in this section. So hope you are writing down the important point. After that, we will go to the next section. So students, there will be one more video for the series. That is the video number four, which will contain up to 100 questions so that we will be completing our deal of 100 questions. Coming to the next one, which of these metals comes into use in the treatment of bipolar disorders? Carbon, lithium, nickel, cobalt. Answer is option B, lithium. Lithium salts are used as a mood stabilizing drug in the treatment of bipolar disorder in humans. Lithium is the lightest metal and the lightest solid element. Students, please note this important point. Coming to the next one, which of these two gases are mainly involved in the Haber-Bosch process? It's a very important students, very, very important. Because I have seen this question in some uh, UPSC examinations and all. Necessary. So please note it. Option A, oxygen sulfur. Option B, carbon nitrogen. Option C, nitrogen hydrogen. Option D, sulfur hydrogen. Answer is option C, nitrogen hydrogen. The Haber-Bosch process is the main industrial procedure for the production of ammonia. That's also very important. 
The process converts atmospheric nitrogen to ammonia by a reaction with hydrogen gas using a metal catalyst under high temperatures and pressures. Okay students, so let's go to the next question. Which of the following non-metals is used in the manufacturing of matchsticks? So students, again and another important question. Carbon, and nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur. Answer is option C, phosphorus. Phosphorus is used in the manufacturing of matchsticks. The chemicals present on the tip of the matchsticks are potassium chloride, sulfur, starch and glue. Very, very important point students, please kindly note it. Matchbox striking surface contains red phosphorus, powdered glass and glue. That point is also very important. These two additional points are very important students. Please don't skip it. Write it on your notebook, okay? If it is it's not it's not a big pro, big deal to watch this video once again and to write it. This will definitely improve your knowledge and memory power only, okay? Coming to the next one, which of the following salts of long chain carboxylic acids are the detergents commonly made up of? Ammonia and sulfonate, calcium and magnesium, cobalt and nitrate, none of the above. Answer is option A, ammonium and sulfonate. So students, uh, detergents are generally ammonium or sulfonate salts of long chain carboxylic acids. Detergents are usually used to make shampoos and products for cleaning cloths. So this is the last question of this video. Thank you for watching. We will see you on the next video. Thank you.